Okay. All right. Two point eight. Here we go. No, oh, my my iPad's not been working very well with with writing on it. I don't know what happened to it. So hopefully it'll work. Okay. We're going to solve polynomial inequalities. Oh, see, like glitches. Polynomial inequalities. Like, it looks like a three-year-old wrote that. I mean, look at that. <laughs> it's, like, it's so bad. Okay. 2-8 um, is really all about solving different kinds of inequalities of different functions, but we're just going to focus on polynomial inequalities. We've actually done this a little bit. Um, we, did, we did solving quadratic inequalities in Chapter P. Uh, but the way that they want you to do this here is you're not allowed to use your calculator. Okay? So if we're solving a function, a polynomial function, is greater than zero, you're trying to find the values that make the, the polynomial positive, right? That should make sense. And if it's negative, you want to find the values that make it ne that makes it negative. So what they want you to do is they want you to make a sign chart. Make a sign chart. So you're not allowed to have your calculator on these. But you can make a chart that's going to help you find out where the positives or negatives are going to be. Okay, so here's the first thing you want to do. Number one, you want to find any zeros of the graph. That's your first step. Find the zeros, okay? Uh, number two, after you find the zeros, you want to turn those zeros into intervals. Intervals. Okay, so like for example, if I were to get zeros of 2 and negative 3, what that does is that splits up my number line into three intervals. Here's negative 3 and here's positive 2. And so I have the interval right here from negative infinity to negative 3. <laughs> then I have the interval from negative 3 to 2. And then I have the interval from 2 to infinity. Okay? So you're first going to find the zeros. Then you're going to split them up into intervals. And then what you want to do is you're going to, number three, test each interval. So you're going to pick a number inside of that interval. If I was going to test this first interval, negative three, negative three, I'd probably pick negative four. Nice, easy number. And I would test it in my function to see if it's positive or negative. All right, so let's do one. Are you ready? Let's go. Number one. <clears throat> All right, suppose that f of x is equal to x plus 3. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, x squared plus 1. And x minus 4 squared. Whew, that's quite the polynomial. It's already been factored for you. There it is. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to determine the real number values of x that cause this polynomial a. We're going to find it the, z the zeros. Okay. B, we're going to find out when this polynomial is positive and see when this polynomial is negative. We've got three parts to do. All right, so uh, the first thing they want us to do is to find the zeros. So let's do that first. So letter A, we want to find the zeros of each thing. And this has already been factored for us, which is nice. So um, if you look at the first factor, we have x plus 3, so that would be negative 3 would be a 0. If you look at the next one, the next one might try and confuse you a little bit. You have x squared plus 1. That's a plus. Is that ever going to be 0? No, it's not. There's no zeros there. Well, plus and minus i, but we're only doing real numbers. And then finally over here, 4 would be a 0 also. Okay. So this one only has two real zeros. Two, three. It's a fourth degree polynomial. 
um, but it only has two real zeros. It has two imaginary zeros also, but we don't need to know that. Uh, two. Oh, you're right. Yes, I didn't. I'm, yes, it is fifth degree. Thank you. Good. It is a fifth degree polynomial. Nice. I even have that right here on my paper. <laughs> that I was. I make mistakes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to make a sign chart. Okay. So our sign chart's going to do this. I like to do a number line. You don't have to, but I like to kind of visualize it. So I have negative three, and I have positive four. And what I'm going to do is from negative infinity to negative 3, I'm going to choose a value in there, any, any x value, and I'm going to plug it back into my equation. So I'm going to pick x is negative 4. Okay, you can pick negative 5. You can pick whatever you want in that interval. I'm just going to choose x is negative 4. And I'm going to plug it in to here. And you're like, what? I can't do that without a calculator. You don't need to know what the answer is. You need to know what the sign is, okay? When I plug negative 4 into this first factor, I get what? Negative. negative. Perfect. I plug negative 4 into here, I get a positive. Then I plug negative 4 into here, and I get a positive. Right? Because it's a negative squared. So I get a negative times a positive times a positive. That gives me negative. negative. Perfect. So this interval right here is going to be negative values of f of x. Gosh, this iPad's not working. Okay. Now let's pick a point in here between negative 3 and positive 4. I would probably choose x equals 0. It's a nice easy number. Okay. So I plug it back in up here. And I get 0 plus 3, that's a positive. So I'm doing f of 0 now. And I get a positive. 0 goes in here, I get a positive. 0 goes in here, and I get a negative, but it's squared. So that's a positive also. OK. So for this middle interval from negative 3, negative 3 to 4, I get positive values of f of x. OK, now let's pick one more point in this interval. Let's pick x equals 5. And let's go ahead and do f of 5. Plug it into the first factor, and I get a positive. A squared plus 1 is a positive. By the way, these two are always going to be positive, right? Because you square that, and that one's always positive. Positive. So I end up with a positive. Okay, once you've done your sign chart, now you can answer their questions. So part B wants to know when is f of x positive? Now, positive means greater than 0, but not equal to 0, okay? So our positives are from negative 3 to 4, union 4 to infinity. I did not include 4. Okay, I didn't write negative 3 to infinity for a reason. At 4, I'm 0. Is 0 positive? No, it's not. 0 is not greater than 0, okay? And then part C was, where is our graph negative? Where is f of x less than 0? And that was during that first interval. That was negative infinity to negative 3. There you go. OK, now let's talk about why in the world did this graph go negative, positive, positive. OK, so let's go ahead and graph it without even using our calculator. You can graph this. So we have a 0 over here at negative 3. And then we had a 0 over here at positive 4. Okay. It's a fifth degree polynomial, and it's a positive leading coefficient, so it's going to start down and end up. And what happens is this 4 right here is a double. It has a multiplicity of 2. Multiplicity of 2. So it's going to go through negative 3. It does some interesting stuff up here, which we don't really care about. And then it bounces back up. Okay. 
And so you can see your graph is negative here. It's below the x-axis there. And then it's positive here and positive there. It's equal to zero here and there. So it's not positive or negative. All right, pretty good? Do you like these so far? Yeah, they're pretty good. You've done this a little bit before. So, okay, let's go to number two now. Number two, now remember these are done without your calculator. So sometimes I have to give you a zero or else you can't find it yourself. So let's look at the polynomial f of x equals 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 10x plus 24. And we want to find out where this polynomial is greater than or equal to zero. This time we'll do greater than or equal to zero, okay? Okay, um, now, you're not allowed to use your calculator, so you can't just graph it. That would be so nice, but you can't. I will tell you that one of the zeros is four. Four is a zero. 4 is a 0 of the polynomial. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We know there's going to be three zeros. Okay, some of them might be complex. We'll see. But I know that 4 is, is a real 0, and it's one of them. So let's take 4, and let's do synthetic division to try and get this down to something that's maybe factorable. So I have 2, negative 7, negative 10, and 24. All right, bring the 2 down. 2 times 4 is 8. You get 1. 1 times 4 is 4, which gives me negative 6. Negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. And we get 0 like we wanted to. All right, so we end up with 2x squared plus x minus 6. And let's go ahead and factor that. And you can use, you know, whatever method you want. Do you want to do star method? Some people hate it. I like it. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. 1, 2, and 2. So remember, this is A times C. This is B. This is A. And this is A. Now, if you don't like star method and you like the grouping method that you learned last year, double cross, whatever you want to call it, that's fine. If you want to just straight factor it because you're pretty good at factoring, that's fine too. So what times what's negative 12 adds up to 1 would be a positive 4 and a negative 3. This reduces to 1 half, and this is already in reduced form. So I get x plus 2 and 2x minus 3. Okay, so my zeros are going to be 4, because that was given to me. Negative 2 is a 0, and so is 3 halves. And what that does is that splits my graph into four different intervals here. So my smallest number is negative 2. My next number is 3 halves, or 1.5. And then I have 4. So I get four intervals here. Now here's the thing. Testing these things takes a long time, right? It does. You know polynomials, though. Okay, you know this is a cubic. You know it's going to start here because it has a leading coefficient of positive 2, and it's going to end here. So you know your graph's going to look like this. Right? You know that. I mean, you should know that. I hope you do. It should look something like this if we were to open this up to an xy graph. You know that. Okay. So I'm trying to find out where this polynomial is what? Greater than or equal to 0. So it's greater than or equal to 0 from here to here. And then, I kind of missed that a little bit. That should be at 4. And then over here, too. OK? So I don't have to pick a point and test. You can, but why? Why, why, why do that? You can pick negative 3. Then you can pick 0. And you can pick a number in there. You can test that, but you don't need to because you know what the graph looks like. So you would say that the answers would be negative 2 to 3 halves. And yes, I put a bracket because we are including those because it's greater than or equal to zero. And then also from four 
to infinity. Okay. Now, if they don't give you a zero, you would have to graph it. But most of the time, I'll give you a zero and get it into this type of thing. Okay, let's look at number three now. Number three. Sometimes they're weird. Do you want to see a weird one? Yeah, you do. You really do. Let me show you a weird one. How much time do we have? Okay, so let's do f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 3. And then we have x plus 1 <coughs> squared. Sometimes they're weird. I, I could have had that whole thing foiled out. We could have done synthetic division. But let's just say this is as far as we can go factoring. Okay? And um, if you tried to find the zeros from this, you would get imaginary. So the only zero is going to be negative 1. x equals negative 1. All right, so this is going to be what they're going to ask for. Letter A, they want to know where is f of x positive. B, where is f of x negative, less than 0. Uh, C, where is f of x greater than or equal to 0. And D, where is f of x less than or equal to 0. All right, <clears throat> so negative 1 is our only 0. So this breaks it up into only two different intervals that we need to test. Because everybody in this interval is going to act the same as each other, and everybody in this interval is going to act the same as each other. Okay. And so what we do is we pick a point in this interval. I would probably choose x equals negative 2, and you plug it in. You plug it into here. You get negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 times negative 3 is 6 plus 3. I don't even care what that's equal to. I know that's a positive. And this, by the way, is the whole thing squared, so that's always going to be a positive. Okay? So in this interval from negative infinity to negative 1, we're always positive. Now let's pick a point over here. Let's pick, I don't know, what do you want to pick? Zero? Yeah, me too. Let's pick 0. So over here I get 0 minus 0 plus 3. That's a positive. And 0 plus 1 squared is also positive. Oh, hmm. So I get that they're both positive. Okay? Um, so let's answer the questions now. Here we go. Letter A. Where is this graph always, or where is it greater than 0? not greater than zero all the time, okay? This point right here is special. It equals zero there. So it's greater than zero from negative infinity to negative one, and then from negative one to infinity. That's, that would be the answer. Where is it greater than zero, positive? That would be in this interval and in that interval, but not at negative one. All right, the question for B was, where is this graph? less than zero. Anywhere? No. The answer to that would be no solution. Nowhere where this graph, where this polynomial is less than zero. Letter C. C was where is this thing greater than or equal to zero? Aha. We can include that zero now. So you know what the answer would be? All real numbers or negative infinity to infinity? That would work. Okay, and then D, where is this less than or equal to zero? Guess what? One answer. Only at x is negative one. That's it. Because it's not ever less than zero, but it is equal to zero at negative one. Okay.